So you might be wondering, I talk about Scotland all the time, I have a giant Jamie cardboard cut out in my art studio. You might be wondering, what the heck is up with the Scotland fascination? And I thought I would talk about that in this video. So how did I end up hosting an art retreat in a Scottish castle in the Aberdeen countryside? Well, I have to tell you, I can directly trace my obsession with Scotland all the way back to 1996. It was springtime. I was studying at the University College London and I was an anthropology major and I was hell bent on becoming the next uh, Jane Goodall. So I was studying all about monkeys and um, ar archaeology, human history and biology. And um, I had a spring break coming up. The classes were very challenging at the University of College London, much more so than at GW. So I was ready for a break. Had my friends with me, had our backpacks on, and we set out to traipse Europe. All the hot spots started with Edinburgh. Then of course we, um, I don't even remember how we got. How do we jump the pond? I don't even remember. We went to France, Germany, spent three weeks in Italy. We went everywhere, but we started in Edinburgh and we did just about three days there I think it was a weekend and it's funnily and kind of weirdly I don't actually remember much except for one thing which is we did a ghost tour that started at night and it was pitch black when it started so I, I feel like it was 11 or midnight even and if you go to Edinburgh now, you can see they have ghost tours are very popular. Um, I don't think it was as trendy or touristy when I was there 20 years ago. I might be wrong. Um, but I just remember <laughs> our guide was, you know, an authentic Scot. So his Scottish burr was amazing. And he was fully dressed in character. And he took us through the toast ghost tour which you can still do today um, where you go under the city and they try to scare the crap out of you telling these true stories which are true um, and they have all these like creepy underlying places where actual people lived and here's the thing about Edinburgh is that it's never been touched by war um, or fire so all of the like under the ground residences like they couldn't build any higher so they all built underground and so they would have these families and like whole cities with this like underground life getting sick and getting the black plague and all these horrible things and um you know like all the like that history is still in it's still there it's very like of a raw form and you can just feel it and of course like I've always been a super big baby about like horror movies and like psychological thrillers like they scar me for life like it, there's something about that stuff that gets seeps into my imagination and like becomes a reality and I just get completely freaked out you can ask my husband I like refuse to see a horror f film or anything like that so this was essentially like a horror movie but in real life because you're actually in the places of these horrible like diseases and then we talk about like the spirits and so and so mr ghost who like everybody knows and these things that these apparitions do so anyways scared the living crap out of me and <laughs> and it was like the presence of the people and the history and these things that occurred like it was like created like a cloak that like draped around me and my soul and just like all these other horror movies like i couldn't get rid of it but unlike other horror movies and <laughs> scary things like over time you know the feeling kind of like fades away and I can go back to eventually being my normal self well it was like this ghost tour like got so under my skin in such a powerful way that like I remember distinctly like you know traveling through Germany and just being obsessed with this with the feeling of Scotland and no no that sounds crazy but it's true and just in different periods of my life like I would think back and it was sort of like the negative horror like scary ghosty parties started to fall away and what replaced it and what remained was just this like heavy feeling of like history and the spirit of the people and just like something about the aura of that place and now, and I don't mean to sound pretentious, but I have traveled the world. I've been to Africa for months and months. I've been to Australia for many months. I've been to South America. Like I have traveled the world and nothing can 
take this cloak of Scotland off of me and out of my soul. Like I feel super connected to them. And it, that sounds ridiculous. And I am totally aware of that fact. I know, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it is true. And so in 19, when did I read the book? I think 19, no, it was probably 2002. Um, I picked up a book at Borders Bookstore back when Borders was still around. I've always been a huge reader and I've always been obsessed with historical fiction. I read the Outlander series. Uh, I think I actually only made it through six because, oh, those are some big ass books. But I digress. So I read the Outlander and it like kind of like brought back to life like my love of the place and I just like was obsessed with this, this book and I was already obsessed with the genre and it kind of like took me back there again. So fast forward now, you know, um, 18 years later and I have got married and I have three children and I'm a working artist. I do art for a living and Outlander has still become my favorite thing. And then they, there's a series on TV about with my favorite book series that I've ever read ever, like ever. And I'm expecting this series to be super lame and it's actually amazing. And then I'm perusing my website, um, my Facebook page, sorry, at some point, um, 2016, oh, I believe, and I see a post from Ivy Newport that she's having a Scottish Outlander art retreat. Now, Scotland is my favorite place on the world. Outlander is my favorite book in the world, and art is my favorite thing in the world. So let's just say I slapped down that deposit like so fast, it, it, my husband did not see it coming. My family didn't see it coming. I just simply announced that I was going. I shared this in a past YouTube video. I didn't have very many following followers at the time, so you probably didn't see or hear or watch it. Um, anyways, so I was super curious to see if my like obsession and all my memories in this thick cloak of Scotlandness that I've been wearing for 20 years is gonna like dissipate the second that I show up on Scottish soil like is this just ridiculous like what what is wrong with me like why do I have these weird opinions about this place that I only spent 72 hours in that like terrified the pants off of me like this does not make any sense so anyways it was kind of a big test but I had enough of the ingredients that I knew was going to be a fabulous trip anyway so I didn't really worry about it too much needless to say long story short I go there and it's even impossibly like more amazing, like a million times more amazing than I had remembered. <laughs> the only thing that was not amazing is that I'm terrified for life of ghosts. So at least my sweet friend Peggy Wilkinson took very good care of me at all of our destinations and all of our hotels to make sure that I was safe in going to my hotel room, <laughs> my hotel room every night, even though I had to take copious amounts of um, wine and also Ambien just to get to sleep because I literally was terrified every night. Um, I'm not kidding you when I tell you these ghost stories really scar me for life. But anyways, during the daytime when we're traveling around and just, oh my God, like the just going through the highlands and visiting these castles and we just, let's just say that it's so much more than, than I can even express. And that cloak that Scottish cloak of familiarity and home and amazement and a little bit of terrifyingness all just came thundering back and then tenfold. So I come back home after this art retreat and um, I have the realization that I am still obsessed and it's worse this time. It's like, <laughs> it's really like just so, so bad. So I am talking about it and talking about it night after night, week after week, month after month. And my husband, God love him, finally looks at me and he goes, if you love Scotland so much, why don't you just plan a freaking retreat there yourself? And that way you have an excuse to go back every single year. And I was having me it was probably on my second glass of wine I think at this point when he said that to me and I just my jaw hit the floor and before he had a chance to <laughs> expound upon that thought and before he had a chance to um 
stop me. I walked straight over to my computer. I did not say one word and I uh, messaged my good friend Lucy Bryden actually weren't even good friends at the time I just barely knew her I had known her online for a few years through Facebook and we met at Ivy's retreat but I messaged her directly and I said hey I'm coming to do an art retreat in Scotland would you like to do it with me <laughs> and she immediately said yes I would and that was pretty much that so that's how it started um, as far as the castle coming around what happened was <laughs> You know we were sort of daydreaming together I think she I think she just picked up you know immediately on like my vibes like this is happening we're doing this um, and there was just no hesitation there wasn't a lot of conversation it was just like okay now what do we do we need a place to we need a place to stay so um, she started telling me and I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan she started telling me about this castle that is in her hometown that she just saw um, Kit Harrington at just I forget when it was um, maybe I think just a few months prior forget what months that I touched base with her and of course I like fell out of my chair while I'm texting with her on my computer and um, yes yeah, so she proceeded to tell me all about this castle that is owned by the um, Leslie family and so Kit Harrington of course plays Jon Snow in Game of Thrones and his girlfriend is Rose Leslie who um, plays his girlfriend Egret on the show Game of Thrones. And of course, if you watch, you know exactly who I'm talking about. So her family owns a few castles in Scotland and this one of them, um, guess what? You can rent it. <laughs> you can rent it. So I did. Um, yeah, so I did. So I haven't actually been there yet myself, but Lucy has walked around. Uh, she's seen the grounds, she's been inside for this Christmas tree event that they were having that Kit, Kit Harrington was at. Um, and so we rented it, we rented the whole damn thing. And I also rented the two cottages that are on the property with it so that all of us are together. There's a couple that are coming that get their own private little getaway cottage, which is fabulous. Um, we have since been, the teachers, who we also added um, Jenny Mano to join us because we became very fast, quick, good internet friends um, earlier this year. And Jenny and I, even though we've been chatting probably weekly um, for over a year, have never yet met in person. And I am going to probably self-combust once we actually meet. So in seven days, seven days from this video getting released, I am getting on a plane with my amazing friend Mandy Brown, who is my assistant and my really, really, really good friend. We are hitting a plane. We're taking the red eye over to Edinburgh and we are gonna get off and we're gonna meet Jenny and her husband Barry for the very first time, which is gonna be insane. Um, and then we are going to take a train up to Aberdeen and we are going to make our castle for our lovely guests. Um, cozy and comfortable and filled with artistic little treats and favors and we have a week's worth of just like sisterhood and arting our faces off and having fully catered meals oh my god every meal and we are just going to like kind of having an amazing experience I will try to do my best to capture some of that on video so I can bring it back to you guys here on YouTube so you can share in our adventures with us as I know whoever is watching this is also into art um, and so I would love to share that experience with you but this is the evolution of how this all started um, I incidentally I also took my whole family dragged them to Scotland last year almost exactly a year ago and I was so, so interested to see if my kids were going to understand and kind of feel the magic that I always have at this place, the dark magic of it included. And I don't even have the words to express how like excited I was that they completely got it when we got there. Um, they already have talks of attending the University of Edinburgh and of course I'm like fully supportive of that <laughs> in every way. It's a very good institution and the price tag is actually very right in terms of um, compared to US other college institution standards so that's exciting but like literally they totally get it um, which was uh, just icing on the cake for me because I, I felt much 
far less foolish about being so um, just caught up in some place that's just so far away from us. Um, so that made me feel a little bit validated like I wasn't completely freaking crazy because um, sometimes I wonder. I just wonder. <laughs> But anyways, that is the history and the backstory of um, the Scottish Castle Art Retreat. And um, I hope you enjoyed watching the uh, watercolor process as I do my version of the castle that we will be staying in. The guests are all staying in the castle. Um, the teachers, again, are staying. We are staying nearby in a little cottage. We didn't want to take up all the rooms in the castle because then we wouldn't have room for everybody else. So, um, and then I have a lucky, lovely, lucky couple that are staying in a little um, cottage that is on the castle grounds. So they have a little privacy to themselves. One of the husbands is coming along as well. So I look forward to sharing with you more of our Scotland art retreat adventures. And thank you for watching. And I have a sign up for next year on my website, awesomeartschool.com. If you want to put your name in as an interest list, I'll probably will have to do a lottery um, to see who is able to go because we have a lot of people interested so far. But you're more than welcome to put your name up for that list for 2020. We will be doing this every year. I don't know if there will be at the same castle every year. We might need a bigger castle or we might be doing this for more than one week. So stay tuned for more information on that and I will see you next Friday with a new video.